Hello, I would like to talk about how I analyze questions. This video is actually inspired by one of the posts that I saw on Airy Facebook group. Somebody was asking a question that they saw on Airy practice exams. So that question made me think that actually when answering a multiple choice question on top of your knowledge and your studies, you can actually utilize some test taking strategies to support your thinking or to support the option that you thought that might be correct. So I would like to show you some of those strategies using a sample question today. The question says a school building located on a dense urban site with no vacant land hires an architect to build a new library via either renovation or relocation while keeping the existing library operational during the process. The school board wants to keep the construction cost and duration minimal. There's an empty former storage space a few doors from the current library. Which phasing option should the architect recommend? A. Relocate the library to a temporary place and renovate the existing one. B. Renovate the library in multiple phases to remain operational during the renovation. C. Build a temporary library to use while the original space is being renovated. D. Build a new library inside the existing storage space and leave the current library at the end of the construction. Of course, with your studies, experience and knowledge, as an architect, you might be able to solve this question. But today, what I'm talking about is more about how you can support your understanding or your knowledge with some strategies. What are those? As a long time question writer and even longer time test taker, I've come to notice that question writers have a certain way of writing questions. But in general, they all like to connect the question to the correct option in more than multiple ways. NCAR question writers have their own unique way. So it may take even a little longer to decode or deconstruct questions during the exam or to learn how to utilize the strategies that I'm going to talk here today. But eventually, down the road, when you take more and more exams, you will notice that you will also start to use some techniques that you develop along the way. You will also start to deconstruct the questions and highlight the important parts and then put them up together to find your correct answer. When I look at these questions, I would like to highlight a few things. One of them is dense urban site with no vacant land. This tells me that I don't have enough space that is adjacent to my lot that I can just relocate and then come back, right? So the option A, which says relocate the library to a temporary place cannot be correct because if you continue reading this question, it says that the library should be operational. So I cannot just shut down my existing library and I don't have any other location to build a new one while the existing one is under operations. So option A should be eliminated immediately. When you continue reading this question, you see that the question leaves both renovation and relocation as your options. So you cannot eliminate any of the options based on renovation or relocation that they recommend because the question says either one is okay. So that's not giving you too much information to narrow down your correct answer. But when you continue, you see more criteria and it is about construction cost and duration. The question says the school board wants to keep the construction cost and duration minimal. They don't have so much time and they don't have so much money. That's a very, very important criteria. Actually, from an architect standpoint, this is the most important criteria of this question because as a person who is studying for these exams, who have been to architectural school and who have been experienced in architecture, should know that phasing is a costly business. So when you look at option B, you will immediately notice that that's a very costly option because renovating the library in multiple phases while keeping it operational during this construction is a very expensive method. And the question strictly tells you to not to do that. So eliminate option B immediately based on your architectural knowledge. But let's say you didn't know that phasing takes money and time. Should you quit this question and skip to the next one? No. You should continue because I'm going to give you more tools to find the correct answer here.
I am getting really closer to the most important part of this question, in my opinion. It is the last sentence. It says, there is an empty former storage space a few doors from the current library. So that's a weird sentence. Because when you look at the whole body of the question, it's not harmoniously integrated with the rest of the question. The question starts talking about a school that is located in an urban site with no adjacent vacant land. They need to fix their library, but it should stay operational during the construction. They don't have so much money. They don't have so much time. Oh, there's also a storage space down the hallway. What does it have to do with anything else, right? Is it one of those lengthy questions that anchor writers just threw in things to trick you or to make you lose time? Or is it relevant? I would say it is highly relevant. And when I say this, let me talk to you about the question writing process. So when a writer is writing a question, first they come up with a scenario. So first comes the question. They invent the question, they invent the scenario, but they don't have too many criteria yet. But they have an answer in mind too. So that correct answer should be connected to the question. So after their question, then they come up with the correct answer or answers. Once they have the scenario of the question and the correct answer set, now they go back to the question and edit it. And they try to create connections with question and the correct answer. These connections are usually created by implementing multiple criteria into the question that are all serving for the same goal. And that goal is to lead you to the correct answer. If you can follow those paths and make those connections properly, you can definitely eliminate the incorrect ones and most likely pick the correct answer. And on top of that, it's of course important to study the material and have the architectural knowledge to support your findings. Actually, that should be the first thing you do. First, when you read a question and look at the options, you should always bring your relevant architectural knowledge into the discussion and lead the way with that knowledge. However, it's not always that easy, especially when it comes to NCARB questions. They always feel like worded super indirectly or weirdly. So if you are feeling like you have knowledge about the content, but you are having a hard time to decode the way of NCARB asking the questions, use these tools to analyze it. And when you analyze it further, you are going to see those connections much, much better. So if we go back to our question and look at that empty former storage space, we will see that one of the options is directly referring to that, which is option D. It says build a new library inside the existing storage space. Bingo. Because the option and the question are both talking about the same space. That cannot be a coincidence. If that information in the question was just a random fill-in type of information that is there to make the question lengthy and wordy, they wouldn't mention that in one of the options. Since both the question and the option are talking about the same thing, it is not a coincidence. That's why the correct option is option D. You could also eliminate option C because it says build a temporary library. It doesn't tell you where, and you know that you don't have vacant land. So where are you going to build that? Who knows? So it's not making a direct suggestion as option D that ties back to the body of the question. So keep in mind that if an information is repeating between both question and the option, it cannot be random. Besides, it is too much of detail to talk about that empty former storage space. So when too many criteria of the same question is trying to tell you the same story, you need to find the option that is meeting that story, that goal. The dense urban site, no vacant land, keeping the library operational, not spending too much money, all tells me that I need to utilize an existing space. And there you go, they gave you that existing space option. They say there's an empty former storage space. So correct option should definitely mention the empty storage space. So in this question, all of these criteria are connected around the same goal, which is reducing the cost and duration within the space that they have.
So I really hope this helps you to read your questions in a better way and analyze them in a better way. Please try to apply these rules when you are practicing at home with practice questions or NCAR practice exams. You are going to start to see a more direct relation or connection between the question and option in the way that I explain here. And the more questions you solve, the better you are going to get at it. As I always say, taking a ton of practice question is the best way to get better at question taking, to get faster at question taking, and to get more successful in any standardized test, including area exams. Until I talk to you next time, I really wish you all happy studying and I really wish you all pass your exams. Have a good day. Bye-bye.